Hi, I'm George, and this is all about how to make and use enchantment tables here inside of Minecraft Bedrock. I'm currently in Minecraft Bedrock 1 2010. So there are a couple of new things in here that I'll be showing you that I haven't shown in previous videos here for Bedrock. But there are several things you have to go through, and there's a lot to know about to make this work out the best for you. The first, of course, is that we need a place to put our table. So I have a room set up right here. And you want to have a spot in the middle. That's where I'll be putting the middle spot. And then you want to have an airspace around your enchanting table. And I've marked that out here with wood. So there's our space like that. And then beyond that, you need an area for bookshelves. So the bookshelves will all be going in around this area in here. So this is the smallest area, basically five by five. You can go larger if you want, doesn't matter, but this is the minimum size. Okay, to actually make the table, we need a few things. We need four obsidian and two diamond, and one book. And to use the table, we'll also need a whole bunch of lapis lazuli. And of course, you need tools or books, other things like that. We'll take care of all that as we go here. Now, I had to go back and mine for diamonds, but they're fairly easy to find. You just have to go down to the bottom of the world and dig around there, and you'll find diamonds. Or look around caves, a lot of diamonds in caves. Obsidian, you can get in caves or from lava. Let me show you that very quickly here. The easiest way to get obsidian is just to find a ruined portal like I have right here. Or if you have some lava, put some water on lava and that also works. Let's just come down here and I'll put my water right there. And notice that the water turns the lava into obsidian. So pretty easy to get this stuff. And then to mine obsidian, you need a diamond pickaxe. So that takes another three diamonds. Now obsidian mines pretty slowly as you can see here. Just keep on banging away at this with your diamond pickaxe it will eventually let go and there we go there is our obsidian so pretty easy to get just a little bit of work okay let's go back to the base now to get the book we'll need to have some leather and also some sugarcane i have both of those going on here now to do the whole setup you need at least 45 leather you'll actually want to have more because you want to have some books in here so take the time and Breed a whole bunch of cows. You can get 45 leather plus more. I think 55 or 60 is a good amount in there. And you want to grow a whole bunch of sugar cane to make the paper. Now it's easy to harvest. All you need is a water trough down the middle here and then sugar cane on both sides of the water trough. And when it grows three high, it's set to harvest. I just have two of these right there. And that would give me enough for about half of my paper. So a couple of growing sets here and I'll be all set. So it goes pretty fast and then break this in the middle. Don't break your bottom block. That will then require replanting. Break it in the middle. It gives you your top two. You just gotta kinda bang away here like that, smash away, and there you go. It goes real fast with the sugar cane. It's good to have anyway. You'll have some sugar in there. Paper is good for a lot of things. Okay, I'll just do this whole round here. Now, I'm not grabbing everything as you can see, but I'm getting most of it as I just run through like that. I missed a few, but not much. We'll just pop back in and grab those again pretty fast. And right there and there. And one's already grown up, and the second one's already grown up. So it grows pretty fast. And that was a lot. That was 64 plus 37. I need 135, so that's over half what I need right there just on the one pass on that sugar cane. Okay, now we can go ahead and make some books. Let's go back over to the base over here. And we'll go to the crafting table. Now, let's open this thing up. Paper is real easy. That's just one row like this. And there's your paper. So each one of the sugar cane gives you one paper. So three to three. And that's easy to do. And then to make a book, you just take one leather, stick it right here, and then surround that with paper. So one leather and three paper. And there's your book. Okay, we now have enough stuff. Take the obsidian, it's right across the bottom like that, three across the bottom and one in the middle. And then your diamonds go on either side of that. And then the top one is where the book goes. And there's the enchantment table. We can now place that down. Let's go ahead, we'll walk over here. And it goes right in the middle right there, just like that. Now, as I move closer, the book is going to open up. Let's see that, just move in. There we go, it opens up. And we can now make an enchantment. If you right click on this, here's the enchantment table interface. And it's real easy to use. Whatever you're enchanting goes here on the left hand side. 
And then right here goes Lapis Lazuli. Here's some Lapis. Let's drop that in. And you can enchant weapons. Or you can enchant armor. Right there. Or you can enchant tools. And you also can enchant books. And this is useful if you find some enchantments you like, but you don't want to use them right away. You can put those on the books and then put those later on onto your other items. I'll just toss in a real cheap one right here. Now, in here we have these kind of strange hieroglyphs. We'll be seeing those again in just a little bit. I'll talk more about that at that point. Left-hand side, this is the cost to get this enchantment. Top one is one lapis and one XP, two lapis, two XP, three lapis, and three XP. The right-hand side numbers, this is how much XP you have to have in order to get the enchantment. This doesn't cost this much. This is just how much you need to have to get this. So if I had this fully powered up, the bottom one here would say 30. So I would need to have at least 30 XP available in order to get that bottom enchantment. So you want to have at least 30 available. Let's take a fast peek. I have 96 right now. There we go. That's just fine. We can do that. Right click and I'll put this back in again. Okay, now the way you use this is you grab one of these and then it's going to be applied onto that tool, weapon, whatever. And we'll then have an enchantment on it. And the enchantments are a little hard to see. We'll see how that looks in just a second here. But over here, as I roll over these, these are the three enchantments I have available at this point. Sharpness one, smite one, and sharpness one. Notice that we have a question mark on the right-hand side. That means that we might get additional enchantments. There's the one that we're going for, and you may get more. And that's kind of a grab bag thing. You don't know if you get more or not. It's kind of random on that, but it is a possibility. Now to apply an enchantment, you just go ahead and use this. Now, I don't like any of these, so I'll use the top one here. And the reason why I'm doing that is that these enchantments will not change until I use something up. It will then recycle. So if I take this out of here, like that, put it back up in here again, we still have sharpness one, smite one, and sharpness one. So I'll use the cheapest. We'll take that, wooden axe. So having a bunch of wooden tools is real nice. Now, you can also enchant books. But because of the cost in cows, books are a lot more expensive than real cheap wooden tools. So I just use you know, a wooden axe or a wooden shovel just to use this stuff up. So pretty easy to do that. A wooden shovel is actually your cheapest. And later on, we can remove that and maybe get back some XP from that. Now to get this higher in here, if you want to get higher levels in here, you're going to have to have some bookshelves around the table. And the bookshelves are going to be powering the table up to higher levels. So let's go over and make some bookshelves. Okay, back to the crafting table. Right click on that. We'll open this up. Now, bookshelves are easy to make. You have planks across the top and the bottom. It doesn't matter what kind of planks these are. You can even mix these things up. Doesn't matter at all. And then across the middle in here, we place books. So it takes three books and six planks per bookshelf. And that's a lot. So that's six planks times 15 bookshelves. That's 90 planks. It takes a lot of wood. Okay, there's our bookshelf. Now, while we're here, Let's go ahead and make another kind of bookshelf. Here's a new kind of bookshelf that showed up in 120, and that's the chiseled bookshelf. I see one right down here, chiseled bookshelf. Easy to make. Same thing, we have the planks across the top and the bottom, but the bookshelf starts off empty, so we'll put a shelf in there instead. And there you go, there's your chiseled bookshelf. So planks and slabs and planks. Again, the kind of wood doesn't matter in here. You can mix it up, doesn't matter at all. Okay, I'll place that right there. And these have some uses. I kind of consider it mostly decorative. We can use this for some redstone stuff. We'll be talking about that just a little later on. That's why I have that comparator sitting right over here. We'll see what that is. You want to have those if you want to get that additional achievement in there. Okay, now that we have some bookshelves, let's go back over here. And let's just get those set up where I can get to them. There we go. And I'm done with that. Okay, now the bookshelves have to go one space away. That's why I marked this off in different colored wood. So put one right there in the corner. That's our first one. And see if there's little kind of things flying out from that. That is the power flying in to the enchantment table. So the bookshelves power up the enchantment table. You can have up to 15 of these. You might as well just go ahead and make all 15 while you're at it. That would give you the best enchantments. And that's what you want. You want to get the best enchantments you can. So that's 15 of those. That's just like that. Five across the back three on the sides, and then two across the front, and that's 15. And you see those little hieroglyphs flying in there? Let's see if we can see those a bit better. There we go. There's a bunch of those flying in. And these are the exact same hieroglyphs that are in here. 
Let me just put something up here so we can see those. Same hieroglyphs, but these don't mean anything. Don't try to decipher that. There's no meaning to that. It's just symbols. There is a history on that, though, just in case you're curious. There's a computer game, a real basic computer game, way back in the 80s called Commander Keen. And that had these symbols in that game. And that's where the symbols came from. So this is being powered up now from these different bookshelves. They have to be at the same level as the enchanting table or one block above. They can't be below, so you can't put them underneath the floor and hide them that way. You have to see them. It has to be an airspace around them. But you can stack them too high if you want. So if I just take this one right here, let's just break this out. Here we go, grab all those books. And I'll put one right there. I still have 15 around here, and it's still going to work. Now you can put in more if you want to, just for looks, but it's only going to be using up to 15. That's the maximum that's used. Now that we have those in here, if I right click on this, and let's bring everything back in again. Here's the lapis. And this we now have much higher XP settings on these, up to the maximum of 30. We have much, much better enchantments. Smite 2, Smite 2 again, and Sharpness 4. That's getting pretty good. Sharpness 4 requires that I have 30 XP available. I do, but it only costs me 3 XP. We can see that. I'll just take that and click on that. That applies it over here. You can kind of see how that has changed. Just a little bit of a purplish coloration to that. I'll bring that down. There's a little bit of a glint happening in there. Real hard to see. This has made a lot more subtle here in 120. It used to be a lot brighter, a lot easier to see. It's much more subtle nowadays. That's on there. And notice that this gave me that sharpness four, which is what I asked for, but it also gave me unbreaking three, fortune three, and efficiency four. So you may get additional enchantments when you place an enchantment on this. Now, the higher up you go on this, this is a 30, the better chance you have of getting these additional enchantments. So you really want to go for those if you can. You're not guaranteed you'll get those. You're not guaranteed what you're going to be getting is kind of a bonus or grab bag, but that worked out pretty well. I like that one a lot. That's a good ax at this point. Okay, now I said that we needed to have an airspace around this, but it's not completely true. You can put other stuff in here, but only certain kinds of blocks. And let's just go out and take a real fast look at that. There are certain blocks that get changed to a different block with just one hit. And I can demonstrate that. Let me just grab a dirt block right here. We'll just grab that dirt block. There we go. Works on water. There's our water right here. If I just right click on this, one click and it changes from water to that dirt block. You can put water if you want to, don't know why. You can put lava as well. Don't know why you'd want to, but you can. Now I'm not sure what the use is for that. It's brand new here in 120. Maybe somebody has a bright idea on that one, but there you go, just one of those little quirks. And at this point, you would have already achieved three of your achievements. You got the enchanter when you made the enchantment table. You got the librarian when you made the bookshelves. And you also got the enchanter when you applied an enchantment onto an item. The last one is the power of books. Let me just show you that. I'll put a bookshelf right here. This is our chiseled bookshelf. You can take books in here and you can right click the book and you have six slots. You can put up to six books in here. Right click again, takes the books back out again. And you can put in there regular books if you want to, or you can put enchanted books. Notice that they don't look any different than your regular books but you can use it to store books. Now, the nice thing about this is kind of a decorative thing. You can put some of these, mix them in with these things, and they look real nice. These bookshelves will not work with the enchantment table. So you can't use these as your 15 bookshelves. Those have to be made with the regular standard bookshelves. But you can store some enchanted books in here if you want to. I'll just put that one right there. Now, I mentioned that there is a redstone signal that comes out of this, and you can grab that as an achievement. We'll just take a comparator right here, a redstone comparator. Let's get right over here. I'll place that on the side. And then as we place books in and out, that will go ahead and read that, and that will then get us that achievement. So you can grab an achievement in here if you're using this to signal redstone and you're measuring that redstone. Okay, there's some more stuff you can do here with the enchantments, just a little bit more. And that's that you can apply enchantments or take enchantments off. And for that, we'll need a couple of things. And that's an anvil and a grindstone. And I'll put those right over here. We'll put the anvil right there and a grindstone right there. Now with the anvil, you can repair and rename items. And you also can work with enchantments in here. Now I need an enchanted book. So let's take that one out of here. 
and your enchantment goes right there. And then place where you want to have enchanted over here, and this is protection. You know, certain enchantments can be placed on certain things. Protection is going to be an armor enchantment. So I'll just take our leggings right here. And I can then place this enchantment from the book and get myself enchanted leggings. So you can use this. You can store enchantments on books and then place those enchantments onto items by using the anvil. You also can use this to stack additional enchantments on. Now notice down here, there's an enchantment cost. This goes up a lot as you place more and more enchantments onto something. So keep that in mind. As you get more enchantments onto an item, you're going to get much higher cost in here. So I would use this just rarely. I prefer to use the enchantment table back there. That's a much less expensive way of getting enchantments. Okay, we also can remove enchantments. And we can do that with the anvil. You get a better view of that. There we go. There's the anvil. Right click on that. And we can take something. I'll take this wooden axe. Put that in here. There's, there's with the enchantment and here's without the enchantment. So I can take enchantments off of items if I want to. It's a good way just to clean up these things to use them again to find more enchantments. So if you've been using a lot of wooden tools just to kind of cycle through the enchantments on the enchantment table, this is a good way to get some of that XP back again. Now to save an enchantment in a book is just like putting an enchantment onto an item. Let's go back over here again. So we'll put our lapis up here and we'll put our book up here. There we go. Now notice that we have one, two, and three again on lapis. Now if I only had one lapis up here, notice I only get to see just that one available. So you have to have enough lapis. I just put a whole bunch in there and I always have all three. So I could do the efficiency one or projectile protection two, which is not bad. Feather falling four. I like that feather falling four. I probably want to put those on my boots, but I'll put this onto a book instead. I can always put it onto the boots later using the anvil. So let's grab that one. And that gave me feather falling and looting and quick charge and power three and piercing three. And we'll pull that one down and we'll save that onto the book. And then I'll put that book over here in the bookcase, right like that. Now, so far we've been looking at this with a complete 15 bookshelves back there and that gives us full power, but you can bring the power down a bit and actually get different enchantments available. Let's see how that works. Go back over here. And for this, I'll need to have some torches. There we go. Now, anything in here, except for those grasses and water and lava is going to block the signal. So we go in here to the enchantment table and we'll put our enchantment in here. Let's just put a book up here and see what we get. Okay, Aqua Affinity 1, Sharpness 2, and Sharpness 3. Let's see, I didn't want to see these and I didn't really care about the real high end level in here. We can change that and get a different set by using these torches. So I put a torch right down here and I put a torch right down here. That's going to block off these two bookshelves. These are now not going to be affecting this. So right now I only have 13 bookshelves acting on the enchantment table. If I right click on that, let's put this back up again. Power one, lure one and sharpness three. So this is a way to get different enchantments showing very easily without having to cycle through some tools. I don't have all 15, so I can't get the highest level over here on the bottom one. I can't get the 30 level, but I still get the 25 level. That's pretty good. It's still a sharpness three. So if you don't want to be using up your tools and you don't mind blocking off some bookshelves in here to bring your power down just a little bit, this is a good way to cycle through and find some different enchantments very quickly. Just place in some torches and that's going to affect how many bookshelves are working with your enchantment table and that will give you different levels of enchantment. So just one more way to cycle through and see different options in here in the enchantment table. And there are a whole bunch of different enchantments and they work differently on different things. As we've already seen, certain enchantments work on certain things. For instance, Feather Falling will not work on a tool, but it does work on armor. And you also can't combine enchantments that are similar. So I can't combine Unbreaking and Mending since they both kind of do the same thing. I can't have both on something at the same time. And there are also three different categories of enchantments. We can see those right here. The first one is just your regular enchantments. And there's a lot of those here. That's your protection, your feather falling, your fire protection. And again, different enchantments will work on different things. The next set, there are four more enchantments that you can get from chests. Treasure chests, chests in ancient cities, chests inside of wooden mansions, things like that. In those, we can find Mending, Frost Walker, Swift Sneak, and Soul Speed. And then finally, Curses, Curse of Vanishing and Curse of Binding. Those cannot be removed by using a grindstone. 
So they had those on something. I couldn't go over here to the grindstone and remove those enchantments. They're kind of locked onto that. So we're stuck with that if we have those. So stay away from those curses. Unless you're doing it against somebody else, then they work great. Now enchantments can have up to five levels depending upon the enchantment. Let's just drop in a, a book in here again. And this is the thing on the right-hand side there. There's Aquafinity that has one level of one. Here's level of two on sharpness, level of three on sharpness. Different enchantments can have different levels. Some enchantments have much higher levels available. Some have lower levels available, but those can go up to levels of five. And you're only going to be seeing level five down here in the bottom slot if you have at least 30 XP available to see those. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers eventually here, so you can help me out on that one. I'm at about 74,000 right now, a long ways to go. So every subscription really helps. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time.